we've learned to dig for roots when we minister to people. Now, people come to me and they begin to tell me what their problems are. We usually have a counseling session along with the ministry. And they're, they're usually talking about things that are on the surface of their life rather than things that are really down below the surface, things we'll call root problems. You know, a, a tree is a good illustration of what we're talking about. Suppose you've got a tree and you consider that an evil tree and a bad tree and, and I want to get rid of that bad tree. So how are you going to get rid of the bad tree? You walk up to the tree and you pick off six leaves. There, tree, that'll fix you. Boy, that'll take care of you. You're gone. Well, you know that won't kill a tree. You can pick leaves off and those leaves will soon reappear. Other leaves will grow back. Well, you say, I'm going to get a little more violent. So you come up, you begin to pull limbs or saw limbs off of the tree. You know, I have an old elm tree that I've been trying to get rid of in my backyard. Just came up and volunteered in the flower bed. And I went out there. It was about six inches in di diameter. And, and I cut that thing off even with the ground. And I thought, well, I've really fixed that tree. And I came out there a few weeks later, and I had 100 or more elm trees coming up. They were coming up all around that stump. They were coming up from the root system everywhere because the roots were still alive. And saints, if you can understand this in reference to deliverance, how important it is to get to root problems. Root problems. Rejection is a root problem. And we're going to talk about that some in our conference here tonight. It is really a major root problem. I'm talking about when people are not loved, when people are not accepted, when, when people are not included, you know. And sometimes this has happened to people within their families. You know, some interesting things happen in, in the ministry of deliverance. You get your entertainment and a lot of interesting things come up. I remember getting a telephone call. I had this fellow on the telephone calling long distance identified himself as Michael. Well, I thought, you know, first of all, I hear the word Michael. That's a Christian now, or a Bible name. And certainly this, this young man must have had some kind of good family ties or something. And then the very next sentence, he said, uh, I am Michael the Archangel. And, you know, I begin to feel kind of important, you know. <laughs> How many people, you know, get telephone calls from archangels? And I said, well, Michael, why did you call me? And Michael said, well, I went to talk to my pastor the other day. Now, I got a little ding-dong on that one. You know, what's this arch archangel doing with an earthly pastor? Anyway, he said he went into the pastor's office and he told the pastor, he said, I am Michael the archangel. And the pastor said, you're no such thing. You are deceived. Get out of my office. He said, he ran me off. He said, I went over to another town and I went to a pastor in a neighboring town and I made an appointment and went into his office and I told him, I said, I'm Michael the Archangel. And you know that pastor treated me just like the other one did. He totally rejected me. He told me I was deceived and get out of his office. I was no such thing. He didn't have time to fool with me. I said, well, Michael, why have you called me? Well, I wanted to see what you thought. Do you know who I am? Now, I know who I am. I'm Michael the Archangel, but do you know who I am? I said, uh, Michael, I just have one question. Yes, sir? I said, what kind of relationship have you had with your earthly father? He said, my father never loved me. I said, Michael, the reason that you feel like it's important for you to be an archangel is because you were rejected by your father. Your father didn't really love you, didn't have time for you. And you felt left out. But if you could be somebody important, then even your father would have to look up to you, wouldn't he? And I just began to talk to Michael like that. And after a while, Michael said, Brother Frank, I can tell that you really love me. And I said, that's right, Michael. I really do love you. And that's the reason I'm talking to you and telling you the truth. Because it's only as you know the truth that you can be set free. And I was able to pray for Michael over the phone. I was able to minister some deliverance to him. And set him free from that power of rejection and from the deception that he had fallen into. Now, I give you that story to illustrate what I've just said. 
that sometimes we're looking at people's lives and we look at the surface thing. Here's somebody that's in deception. That makes me uncomfortable. I don't want that kind of person around me. So what I do, I reject him. Get away from me. Go somewhere else. Don't bug me. I'm not going to have time to fool with that. When all the time, that is only a reflection of a deeper problem. If you try to deal with just a deception, you'll be dealing with the leaves and the limbs on the tree. Or maybe even the trunk of the tree. But the real problem is at the root. And that's what you've got to deal with if you're going to really minister effectively to somebody and to draw them out of the dilemma in which they've fallen. 